Today on the show, we'll be looking at rising unemployment and inflation, the cost of subsidy removal. We also will be looking at the fact that the federal government may revive economy by unlocking $1 trillion in asset sales. Of course, we'll have of the press where we look at the headlines on our national dailies. Very good morning to you and Barakari Salah to our Muslim brothers all over the world. Uh, I heard a lot of people and I read a lot of people on social media yesterday being so nice to Muslim brothers. And I was just thinking about one thing. Uh, the Kalaba man will call it Itong. Uh, the the <laughs> Kajuk man will call it Mbarankang. And the Yoruba man will call it Ojukokuru. Yes, because some of them, yes, genuinely were praying for their um, Muslim friends, but others were just, you know, wetting the ground for fried meat and, uh, you know, a lot of people are on that page. So whatever you're going to celebrate with, um, remember your brothers that are just looking at you and saying, what is up for Salah today? We know that this year is going to be really, really difficult. Some people may not have the ram to sacrifice. They may not have anything to do to eat like that, like they've been um, having, uh, but they might just still have some chicken and all that. But the thing is, the remembrance of why this day is in the first place, may all those uh, teachings uh, that have given rise to a day like this uh, be imbibed by the people who adhere to these teachings uh, in the first place and may the world be better because of a day like today. Uh, we also know that today is going to be very difficult for uh, Lagos residents, especially those coming to the island and the, the people who are already living on the island. It's flooded you know, this morning. It's, it's been flooded for a very long time since last night it has been raining. And in some places it has stopped. In some other places it's still raining. And in, there are streets that if you go into, you have water at knee level or at least the shin level. We do know that it's going to be difficult going into offices and all that. But if the work must be done, like some of us have to be in the office, you have to just roll your sleeves up, roll your trousers, remove your shoe, hold, <laughs> and then you enter the office. Or if you have a car that is high enough, you enter the office. Some cars are stuck on the road because of the water that has gone into their, is it carburetor or whatever it is that does not stand water that much. So. Uh, we just hope that uh, people will not lose so much because of the flooding. And something should be done. VI or Lekki or these highbrow areas are too highbrow as it is to be flooded all the time. So if it is the drainage that is a problem, something needs to be done. If it is something else that needs to be done, please, uh, whatever it is, should be done. We do not want to hear casualties. We do not want to hear houses submerged. We do not want to hear any uh, bad news uh, coming our way just because of that. And we know that when it rains in Lagos, it's always crazy when, it, when you're talking about traffic. In fact, on my way here from the Ojodubega access, I saw a, a tanker, was it a tanker or a trailer, that had skidded off the road and uh, was where it should not be and upturned all that. It's because of uh, the road constructions. There are some places that there are no sufficient signs, especially like the Otedola Bridge, uh, there was a place that was impassable, but there was no sign at all that was showing that vehicles shouldn't pass there. And so some vehicles got into that place and nearly had accident at the time I was coming. I do hope that um, others coming behind will be more careful when they get to that point and just slow down and negotiate where they need to negotiate and maneuver where they need to maneuver and go where they need to go. But I'm very sure a lot of places uh, will, be, will be flooded this morning, especially on the island. Thank God that today traffic on the road will not be that much because it's Salah for crying out loud. It's a holiday. And I know that some Nigerians will just add one more day to themselves. So Wednesday, Thursday is a public holiday or are public holidays. In fact, is a public holiday put together. 
I'm sure a lot of people on Friday may not even go to work. So it's like from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you have the weekend. It's a long weekend as it is. So that's why this morning there were no vehicles on the road that much. So it, the few ones that were there were speeding too much. Some of them do not even have good lights. You know that when you live in Lagos, um, because you're always forced most times to just crawl, uh, to drive at a crawling sp uh, pace, you don't think about having very good lights so that you can move uh, fast enough. You just feel that, okay, I don't need them that much because I will be inside traffic. There will be other lights. There are street lights as well and all that. And then what I saw this morning uh, scared me. A lot of people... Some vehicles had just one light, and I wonder what the traffic people are doing. These are the kind of vehicles that they should put off the road. One light, and you're coming. What if um, another person is coming on a bike, even though it's illegal, but he's coming on a bike and he's thinking that you are a bike, and he wants to give way to you, only to find out that the other side <coughs> is just the other side of a vehicle and hits uh, you. It's going to be really, really bad. Okay, this morning, uh, we know that today it's Wednesday. Um, uh, it's a potpourri of a lot of things that we are going to uh, be talking about, or we can talk about. It's a midweek for crying out loud. A lot of people will be in churches today as well to do midweek service. A lot of other people will just be looking out for possibility of fried meat as it is. So once again, I just say uh, happy salah to all my Muslim brothers and happy salah to Nigeria as it is. We have some uh, things that are going on on the social media. Some of the stories are like the Nigerian Air Force redeploys 98 senior officers, uh, commanders uh, in the Nigerian uh, Air Force. Okay. It deploys 98 senior officers and commanders in major shakeup in that sector. The Nigerian Air Force on Monday evening approved the redeployment of no fewer than 98 officers as approved by the Chief of Air Staff. Air Vice Marshal Hassan Abubakar. And so that shake-up that has been done, uh, we're hoping that the shake-up is not just going to be shake-up. Everywhere, they're hiring and firing. There's shaking up here and there. And we know that one of the chiefs, uh, one of these chiefs that have been uh, uh, changed now, is saying that he feels like a tiger. So he's roaring already. We, we're hoping to see better things. And I didn't... So Niger Nigerian Air Force is doing their own, and uh, so many other uh, uh, officers or chiefs will want to do some shake-ups so that they can function optimally and do what they need to do. The new appointees included uh, uh, branch chiefs, air officers, commanding commandants uh, of tri-service establishment, uh, Nigerian Air Force institutions, all those people uh, some of the people that are affected, and there are some new officers that are the new sheriffs in town. We do hope that shake-ups will not remain shake-ups. Shake-ups will be uh, part of the solution to the rot in the system uh, everywhere. The sec every sector of our life in Nigeria needs some kind of shake-up and sitting up as well. So this time is for the Nigerian Air Force, and they've done that shake-up. We wish them well. We do hope that uh, uh, things will move on well. Uh, the second trending topic that we have is the fact that federal government has suspended Lagos Ibadan Road reconstruction deals after Salah. And when I was reading these on the social media, uh, the first, some, I saw one of the questions that was asked, what exactly are they doing on Lagos Ibadan Expressway that takes so many years or that has taken so many years? And even when <clears throat> it was said that the work will be done and dusted even before the end of the last administration, what actually are they doing? What actually are they doing? That has taken so many years. Now they have suspended the uh, road work, the road construction till after Sala, which means it's till after tomorrow maybe, or till after Sunday, we do not know. And uh, we hope that they, they, the road will be free enough. Now that they have suspended uh, the work there so that the road will be free, this is the time that there are no vehicles even moving along that road. Maybe this holiday would have even be a better time. They should have opened up the road or stopped the construction maybe two days to the Salah Day celebration and then continued on Salah Day because the, the traffic on that road would be so small that they could have been working without even feeling uh, the, the traffic on their heels, you know. So maybe it's a wasted um, 
free time that they are going to have right now. But what do I know? I don't know how it works in construction. So I thought they should have used the holiday that cars are not moving to do even more than they have been doing. So that after Salah, we know that people who are returning will have where to pass and come back to Lagos as it is. According to the Federal Control of Works in Lagos, Mrs. Olukore De Kesha, the suspension is uh, to reduce possible gridlock during the Eid al-Kabir celebrations slated for Wednesday and Thursday, that's today and tomorrow. Uh, the 127 uh, kilometers um, Lagos Ibadan Expressway is Nigeria's oldest road that was commissioned in 1978 by the military. It was commissioned in 1978 by the military government of Olusegun Obasanjo. Yeah, 127 kilometers. Obasanjo uh, commissioned that road. In July 2013, the project was awarded to Julius Berger, Nigeria, and Reynolds Construction Company, Nigeria, by the Good Luck Jonathan Administration at a cost of 167 billion naira with a completion period of four years. So far, the federal government has approved about 240 billion for the reconstruction of the expressway out of a total of 315 billion, which is the project's contract value. The highway on which work has stalled over time connects Lagos and Ogun and Oyo states, and it leads to various regions of the country. So from 2013, that it was commissioned by the Good Luck Jonathan administration and uh, Till now, the work is still going on. And at the time of Jonathan, when it was uh, given at a rate of 167 uh, billion, the time of completion was supposed to be four years. Was it because the Jonathan administration was ousted and then the new administration of President Mohammed Buhari came that things changed, the budget went up and everything, and four years became eight years, eight years became nine years, and now... We're still constructing the road or reconstructing the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. It beats everybody. It seems as if every administration must have a piece of Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Something must be done. A solution must be sought so that um, we know that we have a solution uh, that will last. That is not the only road that needs to be constructed. There are inroads into other places that feed the nation, for instance. When we talk about food, the villages that have this food that have to bring it to the town, the city centers so that it can be cheap enough, do not have roads. And so taking the food out to where they have to sell this food would be so, so stressful that when it gets to the market, it becomes very costly. And so it's affecting everybody. So roads are not only for, for cities. Roads are also for villages. Roads are for other places <clears throat> that for now cannot get access to the main cities. Main cities are places that villages should empty into, as it is. It's like the sea, and every other uh, river uh, and tributaries will come into the sea. But if there is no place for the water to navigate into the sea, everywhere else will be flooded. You know what I'm saying. So do the Lagos Ibadan Expressway and get it over with, and then do other roads that people actually need. The people who may never travel from Lagos to Ibadan or from other villages to Ibadan or Lagos, uh, they need these roads to just bring out their goods or do what they need to do and have the, a life that uh, will tell them that, okay, Nigeria is taking care of us as well. So this is our country. Everybody needs to enjoy as well. Well, but that's how it is um, of the press will be next. We are going to take a short break right now to see what the weather is saying so that you can make informed decisions. Stay with us. <laughs> 